and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So the new year is upon us, with 2024 coming to a close, let's look back at the last year worth of videos and see a bunch of nice highlights. So for some fun stats, in 2024 I made 120 videos, then I also made 38 shorts, I made 15 public live streams, plus dozens more of private live streams, then I made 12 members QA videos, and the whole thing is about 31 hours of videos, plus about 30 hours worth of courses. So you have definitely quite a lot of stuff. There's quite a lot of content for you to learn from. I really hope my videos have helped you a lot in your own learning journey. I made a page on my website with my highlights. So here we can see everything from a bunch of my special favorites. There's a bunch of free courses, so my two big ones. I made a bunch of videos on C marketing, a bunch of videos on some really awesome free ebooks. There's all kinds of Unity tutorials, some really interesting topics that I covered in my Game Dev Report newsletter, a bunch more high level tutorials on how to make specific types of games, and then a bunch of miscellaneous topics. Things like Was Man and Lords a solo developed game? Could a solo developer make GTA? The big news that happened with the Unity runtime fee? How Unity announced Unity Next Gen? The Unity Tips trading card game? And then, as usual, my top new games and top new assets videos. I've been making these series for like 4 or 5 years and I still love doing them. So yep, let's see some highlights. First up top, actually if you notice here, here we have best videos of 2020, 2021, 2022, and actually 2023 is missing. This is the video talking about, did I achieve my goals in 2023? So I actually did want to make a top videos of 2023, but they also coincide with when I was working on my C Sharp course. So that was a ton of work, that is why I didn't end up making that video. I might actually at least make the page at some point in the future. Then for my favorite videos from this year, there were definitely a bunch of really interesting ones. Starting off with this one, this is now a blank channel. This was my April Fool's video. Definitely a very silly experience. This was quite fun to make this. It required me to learn quite a lot about how to film real life. Yeah, definitely a very interesting format, very interesting video. I have no idea if I will do something special for next year's April Fools, we'll see. Then my Game Dev Report video. This was another really interesting experiment. I really enjoyed making this. Basically talking about the news and making it in a really nice edited way. This is definitely a format that I very much would like to continue doing, but it does take quite a lot of work in order to record, edit and do these videos. So I just need to figure out some way of doing these videos a bit more efficiently. But yep, I definitely very much would like to continue doing this series. Then actually a recent one, how to make a $50,000 game. This is an idea that I've had for quite some time how to reverse engineer all kinds of metrics in order to figure out what we need to do in order to have a game reach a certain goal. Although also related to that is this, also one of my favorite videos this year, talking about how you can make games just for fun. Basically how if you want to make games, if you want to make them for money, that makes sense. But if you want to make them just for fun, just to build something, that is also a perfectly valid option. That is something that a lot of people forget. You don't have to try to make money on everything you do. So this is definitely a very interesting topic. Then another really great video was this one on how I have an awesome ability. This video is basically talking about the power of experience, how because I've been making games, how I've been programming for so long, because of that, I have the ability to do pretty much any game, any genre I can think of. So I can make strategy games, management games, racing games, platforming games, casual games, I can make pretty much anything. Again, thanks to the power of experience, thanks to spending 25 years programming, because of all that knowledge, I have gained the ability to build any game I can think of. Then on free courses, that was obviously the big thing this year. Start off with this one, my crazy plan, talking about free courses. Basically, I'm a big believer in free education, but I also have to make a living. So how can I combine that? How can I make sure that everyone can access knowledge even if they don't have any money? Once at the time, being able to make a living so I can keep doing this for many, many years in the future. So over here, I talked about that plan. I plan to make free stuff with optional paid stuff. And thankfully, it has actually gone quite well. For example, my free C Sharp course. All the video lectures are completely free over here in this video. So here the course covers pretty much everything, everything from beginner, intermediate, advanced, all kinds of topics. And then there's an optional paid version with a bunch of nice bonuses. It has a companion project which has some really interesting frequently asked questions, quizzes, and importantly some really awesome interactive exercise. I definitely really enjoyed making these. They require you to actually write code in order to complete the lectures. I think this is really awesome, but at the same time it's really just a bonus. If you can't afford the premium version, you can definitely just guide yourself. Just watch the lecture and make sure to apply what you're learning in order to actually gain that knowledge. So if you have no money, you can just use your time in order to apply that knowledge. But if you can't afford the premium version, this one has a really nice guided path. You can just go through the interactive exercise, just do exactly what it requires, and you will gain a ton of knowledge. Then the other free course, which is slightly different, is one on Unity Dots. For this one, since it's a much more niche topic, because that didn't really make sense to have the whole thing free and just have some premium paid version because I couldn't really figure out anything to make premium, there's no companion project for this course. So for this one, I just ended up making a real robust free version. So the entire course is about 17 hours long, and you can see the first seven hours over here for free on YouTube. 
So that way, once again, anyone who wants to learn about dots, they can learn so right through this video. They don't have to pay one cent, they can gain quite a lot of knowledge. And then the people who can afford it and who do want to see this entire game going until the very end, those people can pick up the premium version. And if just a handful of people do that, I can afford to keep doing this. So yep, this was really my big attempt this year, my crazy plan to make some free courses. And I'm very happy to say that it did work out quite well. A bunch of people got a ton of knowledge for free, and a handful of people picked up the premium versions. Which means, yep, I can keep doing this. In fact, right now, I'm actually planning a really nice free mini course and a bunch more substantial courses, and I do plan all of them to have some kind of substantial free version, if not the whole thing. So yeah, thank you so much to everyone who picked up the optional premium versions. You are the reason why I can keep making free videos so that everyone, even people who can't afford them, like even people like myself when I was a kid and I had no money, even people like that can still find access to high quality education nowadays. Then some really interesting topic that I covered this year was team marketing. I made a bunch of videos with Chris Zukowski. If your goal is to find success with your games, then you absolutely need to know about marketing. And knowing Steam, Steam is really the main platform for in-devs. And Chris is a really great teacher, really great at teaching you exactly how to find success on Steam. I've been reading his blog myself since about 2018. So it was really awesome to finally get to collaborate with them and make some really nice videos. On this one, same thing. I've made a whole bunch of videos containing a ton of Steam marketing knowledge. But if you can afford it, then Chris also has some really nice courses. These condense all that marketing knowledge into a single course, so you can just go through it and you will gain quite a lot of knowledge that will help you find success with your games. Then another interesting category, some free ebooks. Unity has recently started putting out some really awesome free books. They are absolutely excellent. There's a bunch of them on programming, multiplayer, visual effects, and so on. These ebooks are completely free and they are packed with a ton of information. I definitely do recommend you go through those. Then for the next topic is something that is pretty much the main reason why I started this channel, Unity Tutorials. So basically almost six years ago when I started this channel, my goal was basically to share the knowledge that I had accumulated. By then I had already been making games for about 10 years. So I felt I had quite a bit of knowledge I could share. So that is why I started with Unity Tutorials and I continue making them. So this year, not as many because once again, I spent all that time making 30 hours of complete courses, but I still made some really nice ones. For example, this one on the very beginning of the year on getting started with Unity Dots. Dots is a really awesome tool set. The benefits it provides are truly insane. So if you are an advanced developer, I highly recommend you learn about Dots. You can watch this video. This video is about one hour long covering the entire overview of how the API works. And then of course you can watch my free Dots course in order to see how to apply it in a practical way. Also running to Dots, a recent one on getting started with Netcode for Entities. This is Unity's multiplayer tool stack. This is the one that is meant for super fast competitive games or games with lots of data. It is naturally pretty complex, it requires knowledge of Dots. But if you want to make some very complex fast paced multiplayer games, if so then yep, this is the Netcode you want to use. Then a fun one from quite a while ago, how to detect errors in your game. This is a very simple, but actually a very, very useful one. You can basically just hook onto one delegate that Unity provides, and you can actually identify all kinds of errors. This is a really awesome, simple thing to add to your games. That way, when your player encounters some kind of error, they at least know that something went wrong and the game might not be behaving correctly. Another great tutorial, or rather knowledge, is this one on the Visual Studio shortcuts that I use. I made a really nice diagram of all these shortcuts that I use very regularly. If you use these shortcuts, you can definitely improve your productivity by quite a lot. Then a fun one, how to make a custom livestream character. If you've joined me on live streams, then you've seen the little characters walking at the bottom of the screen. That system allows you to customize your own character. And this video over here is basically a tutorial on how to do that. You just go onto the website, you log in, then you download this little sprite sheet, and then you can just draw on top of it and your character will look like the sprite that you drew. Another nice educational video is this one, how YouTubers find any games to play. This is another really great marketing video. On this one, I talk about how a handful of YouTube creators, streamers, influencers, and so on, how they made some posts talking about the best ways to contact them. You can follow these nice checklists in order to make a proper email to hopefully increase your odds of being covered. Then a video on a really nice tool. It's a tool called Animotive where you can basically embody a character. You can put on a VR headset and then as you move around, you can actually create some nice animations. So if you want to make some mocap animations but you don't have the budget to afford a $5,000 suit, if so, then this is really awesome. You can just put on a VR headset and get some really nice animations. For some awesome free stuff, this year I learned about the Unity Student Plan. This is a really awesome plan that I did not know existed. You can get a whole bunch of free stuff. You can get free tools, free assets, and so on. All it takes is really that you are a student. That's it. So if you are a student on pretty much any kind of university, if so, you can grab this and get a bunch of assets, tools, and assets, and get it all completely for free. In this video, I basically took those assets and made some three simple video games. So I made a nice city builder. Then I made a fun Valley Drive minigame. And finally, I also made a nice and simple RPG. You can get the student plan and you can also download the project files that I use for making these videos. Then a fun experiment, how to make your first game in 100 seconds. This is definitely a format that I would like to do a few more. Basically some really high level overviews on how to make a game, how to make a specific thing in a very, very short amount of time. 
Obviously, it's not a super detailed tutorial, but getting a nice overview of how to make a game in just 100 seconds, that's really awesome. And a great recent one is this one, the most one, the Unity feature is finally here. This is all about how Unity 6 is now available, and with that comes with some really awesome features, including one that people have been asking about for many, many years. In this video, I'll also go through an overview of how to implement all of these new graphics features. These are really awesome, it literally takes the game from like 60 FPS to like 300 FPS. It's a massive thing by just toggling a single checkbox. So yep, lots of tutorials, and this year I'm definitely planning to do even more. And then something really nice that I started this year was my Game Dev Report newsletter. Again, I started off the Game Dev Report video. I made these a few times, then I realized that making videos takes a ton of time. I can't really make these videos very regularly. So because of that, I made a newsletter. It's just text, so I can really just write them out very easily. If you want, you can go ahead and sign up. I send out a new issue every single week. And over here, I can cover all kinds of things, news and interesting articles that I come across every single week. And I took some of those and made some videos related to it. For example, how Half-Life turned 20. That one is talking about a really awesome documentary. And here I covered five nice lessons that I learned from that documentary. Then also this really awesome one on how the developer from the Super Smash game spent $600,000 to make some really awesome educational videos. So yep, I really enjoyed making this newsletter this year. I definitely plan to continue making this, making a single issue every single week, non-stop, pretty much until the end of time. Then the other video format that I continued doing this year was the how-to game. Again, it's another format that I really like and I very much would like to continue doing. They take quite a lot of effort to do, that's why I only managed to do about three of them. There's one on how to make a turn-based strategy game. This one is featuring the game Classified Friends 44. Really nice game, really cool. So basically I go over it and I talk about how all of these things could be implemented. So how you could implement the Overwatch, the cover system, flanking, spray zone, and so on. The other one is how to make a real-time strategy RTS game. This one is featuring the game They Are Billions. Really awesome game, really cool. So here I talk about the unit selection, the flow field pathfinding, the fog of war, place buildings, and so on. And the other one was on how to make a city builder. This one is featuring the game Pioneers of Pagonia. Really awesome game, really cool. On this one I talk about the buildings, the placement logic, how to create some roads, some dynamic meshes, how to do some pathfinding, node-based pathfinding, how Unity Dots can really help with these games, how to do item recipes, and a bunch more. So you have this series, I really like it and definitely plan to continue doing it. And then a whole bunch of miscellaneous videos on all kinds of topics. Here a big one on Unity Next Gen, how they unveiled what is essentially going to be Unity 7 or whatever they call it. This one is really only coming in the future, like in 2026. So this one is still very far away, but what they showed here, what they showed at Unite seems really impressive. Basically merging the render pipeline, something that a lot of people have asked. Also making game objects and dots code be much more well integrated. So as a whole, this future version seems really, really awesome. Then I made a very important video on how you should stop blindly watching tutorials. What I mean by this is don't just blindly copy paste code. If you do that, you don't really learn anything. So you have to watch a tutorial, then watch that code and actually apply, actually put into practice what you're learning. That is the only way you're actually going to gain knowledge. Then a video on how Unity 6 is finally out and how you gave me an award. This was really awesome. I'm definitely very happy that all of you enjoyed the content that I make. This is now the third time that I've won this award. And pretty much every time, every single day, every single year, I constantly try to keep doing things to be worthy of your votes. So yep, next year, the same thing. I will continue making lots of awesome videos for you to learn game dev and perhaps win the award next year as well. Then a really fun one on how you can use Unity for not game dev. Basically how if you have Unity knowledge, keep in mind you don't have to just make games. Unity is really just a rendering engine. So if you have Unity knowledge, you can do all kinds of things, not just games. Then one on another really awesome ebook, this one about five trends shaping game development. This was in the very beginning of the year, but still a really nice thing. And a video on an interesting topic, so could a solo dev make GTA? It's an interesting question because the question depends on the answer, because there are many, many GTA games. You've got games from the original GTA, that's a top-down game, so could a, an experienced solo dev be able to make that game? Thanks to the tools that exist nowadays, I actually believe a solo dev could build something up to, let's say, GTA 3. Then another similar video on Is Man Lords Made by a Solo Dev? This was one of the big hit games this year, and the conversation around was quite interesting because apparently the game has a single solo dev, but that solo dev is rather managing a giant team of people. So is that considered solo dev or not? That's a really interesting question. Then a nice one on going through seven lessons from six months making a roguelike tower defense. I really believe you should be making smaller games and six months is a great thing. So this video was really awesome. Here TJ goes through a bunch of lessons that he learned while making this game. Very great video. Another interesting one on how you should try this strategy. Basically it's how the developers bite me games, how they made a game in just 30 days, they put it on Steam and they actually found quite a lot of success. Then, one of the big Unity news this year was how the runtime fee is finally gone. I must say, I did not expect this at all. I did not expect them to do a complete 180, but they finally did, so thankfully that's awesome. All the things with the runtime fee, all of that is completely gone, completely in the past. Then a fun video on how my most successful game was 9 years ago, so is it still good? 
Basically, I just played my game, Game Court DX. I played that one on live stream. It was really nice. I hadn't played this game in a very long time, so I really enjoyed playing this. And something really cool, the Unity Tips trading card game. This is an actual physical card game. It's really cool. I got this from the guys behind Binary Impact. The cards are full of Unity Tips. This was really awesome. It's really fun to have something nice and physical. Another interesting video was this one on how you should not waste five years. This was basically a developer that gave up on their game, gave up on their five years of work. And my advice was really, instead of giving up, just find a way to take that to the finish line. I find that finishing projects is an extremely important skill set and one that you should definitely try to gain. Another video about an interesting game was this one on how one dev found 20k wishlist by making one thing that a lot of indie devs miss but this game doesn't. It's about the game Blood Bar Tycoon, real interesting game, I've played it for a bit. The whole thing is quite fun, it's about managing a bar where you've got vampires and you've got humans and you need to feed upon them. It's a really fun concept. Then this video, really nice, make your game stand out with one tiny thing. Basically, this is a video all about custom cursors, and specifically about my custom asset that I made. This was on a flash deal on the Black Friday sale, so if you picked it up, I hope you put it to good use. Basically, it's an asset that helps you do custom animated cursors for your game. This is a really nice way to add some little bit extra polish to your game. Or also another interesting tools video was this one, the fastest tools in the world. On this one, I basically did a quick overview of these two DOTS assets. DOTS is still lacking nowadays, there are no pathfinding and no animation system, so these two assets are really awesome for plugging those gaps. Or this fun video on what happens when you go too far. It's just a video talking about a really cool, interesting effect that you might never have seen, but if you see it, you might go crazy wondering why does this happen? Why does a perfectly solid sphere, why does that one suddenly become completely messed up? And related to that, another second video very much related to the same problem. This is how one developer from the game Ixion found a solution to that problem. Really clever solution. Or another recent video, the best strategy to make games for money. In this video, I'll talk about some studios that are doing some interesting strategies. How, if you want to make money, there are some things you can do. But of course, it's up to you to define, do you want to make money or do you want to make the games that you want to make? Sometimes those two can overlap, that's awesome, but sometimes you have to pick one or the other. Or this fun one on how I also make mistakes. This is an interesting video on how I was live on live stream and I had no idea why something was happening. I added a ton of logs in order to figure out what exactly was going on. This was definitely a very tricky bug. So you have lots of very interesting miscellaneous videos on all kinds of topics. And then my top new games. I've been making this series for about four years now, I think. In all that time, I've seen hundreds of really awesome games. It's really impressive, all kinds of really cool stuff that comes out every single month. There's pretty much no month where it's easy for me to pick just 10 games. Every month I always have like 20 or 30 really awesome games and I gotta cut it down to just 10. So yep, it's really awesome how there are so many awesome games to play. And the other series that I've also been doing for many, many years, this one on the top assets. I usually make the best free new assets, the best systems, and the best visuals. This is another really awesome series for me to basically keep up to date with all the tools, all the visuals, all the kinds of things that are coming out. There's some really awesome stuff, there's some really awesome tools that can really help your game stand out, or some really awesome visuals that can really make your game look like a AAA game, even if you have a very tiny indie budget. So yep, those are my highlights for the best of 2024. Definitely another very interesting year. Lots of videos, lots of tutorials, lots of free courses, lots of miscellaneous videos, lots of stuff. I really hope you've enjoyed a lot of these videos. I really hope my videos have helped you on your own game dev journey. And I really hope you have an excellent 2024. Alright, so enjoy the new year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.